So maybe this Rubik is the uh, uh, is going to be the target for that. You can pick up something tankier. You can put this primal beast or the tusk into a support position. And right now they have to, they'll have to reveal something like that. At this point in the draft, this third pick trying to keep this pick flexible is so hard. And sometimes yeah. you just overdo it. You make everything too flexible. You end up not knowing what you're going to do anymore. But it is going to be Grimstroke. I have been wondering about this guy because. Um, I think that a lot of the counterplay versus the illusion heroes right now is just based on out-tempoing them. But we saw earlier in the EU DPC, we saw the Shadow Demon come out for Terra Blade to great effect eventually. Um, and I've been wondering when we'd see the Grimstroke in use for, well, against all of these really stat-heavy heroes like the TB, like the Morphling. And uh, here he is, and he's got two cores that go in for him now because I don't think that this Grimstroke is a core. Imagine an offlane Grimstroke with the four tasks. That would be cool to see. But yeah, it's it's probably looking like a position five for uh, for Meth Avenue with an offlane tusk mm -hmm. and a uh, and a four Rubik. That that's what it looks like. Um, could yeah. this be an opening for like an anti mage? You know, Grimstroke anti mage. <laughs> we come back to that to the lane. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? A Am versus Morph again. What year is this? Uh, and like, and that one has has never been like. A clear AM win either, right? It's been like, yep. okay, there's a window where the AM really steps on the morphling, and then eventually it just scales past you, and like you're just a you're just a morphling. Oh, and another thing about this Grimstroke, um, the Broodmother actually, you can't just be like a, a Broodmother yep. hobbyist. You got to be a Broodmother player, because if you don't split up your spiderlings, you're going to be taking so much nuke damage <laughs> from the uh, the Grimstroke. Uh, it is uh, it is a lot of damage that he can do with his brush. Um, so they ban out the Monkey King on spawn. I like that one. I think it's good. It's one of the agility heroes that doesn't really care even if you do steal his attack speed. His ulti still, uh, still does the job. Mm -hmm. uh, Myth Avenue are banning out the Puck. So they're expecting this Tiny to be a support. What, what would that be? A 5 Mirana, 4 Tiny, or the other way around? Yeah, that feels very greedy to me, honestly. Like, one of these heroes is not going to get what they need. Like, if you put the Morana to five, like, you're supposed to be building the mech, right? Brood? Brood can <laughs> build the mech? Yeah. Yeah, but then, then you're stuck. Then you're stuck in the old paradigm. I thought I thought we were picking the Morana to escape from the clutches of the meta, and instead you sink right back into it. No, but, like, you, you totally can. That's why it's the meta. I would just, I'd be disappointed, is all. Yeah, a long-lasting meta that uh, is uh, most likely going to be there on the Major as well. Everyone is hoping for something different and uh, hope dies last. Though, uh, you know, <laughs> it is the... Uh, it is actually a question. Your name is the positivity cast. Yeah. <laughs> It is, it is, because we radiate with positivity through our, uh, mm. for, through our faces, showing the, uh, the viewers just... Uh, how you can you can transfer mm -hmm. it there even by uh, by saying not so nice and popular things. Uh, Forty seconds left for spawn. Um, I would want them to get a support right now. Something like an undying seems like a solid one to me. Yeah, greatly enjoy the undying. There's absolutely nothing Miss Avenue you can do about that. But they're going to go with the DK. So it is, it is dual support for Murana Tiny. Ah, yep. oh, did you have to do it to me? Did you? I mean, it's it's a dual push lineup. So on one hand, they're they're killing the dream of like the Morana going against the meta. On the other hand, like dual push lineups are phenomenal. Like if you want to give your broodmother the space to take towers in peace, you go and put your Dragon Knight on a tower elsewhere, and they will hopefully react to him first. Uh, alternatively, of course, they can just stomp on your spider, and then you take towers with the DK. You just don't meet the two up if you can manage. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking at spawn and I'm kind of scared for their damage in the early stages of the game, especially mm. against the hero like a primal beast. Like, how do you kill him? So that that's what scares me. Other than that, I do like the uh, the double push lineups. Even sometimes when you're not good at killing, you're okay at pickoffs, and you know they will go for the okay. draw in the end. Okay, um, shard on the draw is actually really strong this game. So in that regard, mm -hmm. it makes sense. Um, but it is gonna be. I I thought maybe you put a five tusk and then uh, run an off lane Grimstroke. Not not gonna be happening. So it's gonna be a five Rubik here. This lane of the Drow, if Exilern is not there every single time that he has the time to go there, this lane is gonna be abandoned at like minute five because the brood will eat them yes. up. 
Oh yeah, alive. That's uh, I... Drow versus brute is so 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 sad. I mean, I get. I guess you can bring the Grimstroke there, but the problem is really with a picking a lane like this that you're going to be spending the heroes that you want to make moves elsewhere on a lane that you're going to lose anywhere. And you don't get any tempo out of that. You don't even get a lot of time out of that in this case. Because uh, that, that brood is going to keep so many of your heroes occupied, it's ridiculous. I, I can see why you want the pick, but especially if the Morphling gets to build that Aghanims relatively early, like it, we've seen what that does. I think Miracle, hasn't he even been on the receiving end of that? Was it, wasn't that yes. a Miracle Draugen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Ah, you're right. You're right. We both kind of agree that Myth Avenue haven't been looking the greatest. But now looking at this draft, yeah. do you do you think they got this? Do you think uh, not got this? Um, I, I can I heard from your voice that you are probably favoring the other side. But uh, do you think they have a chance? Mm -hmm. Is this something that can work? They do have a chance. Um, they have plays they can make. Like if you if you ever you know listen to what Notel has said the past couple of years, right? What what's the stuff that he always comes back to? It's always all right, but doesn't matter how far behind we are, can we make plays? You have a Tusk, you have a Primal Beast, you have a Rubik who has some uh, some pretty nifty things to steal this game, especially from the Tiny, from the DK. It, you have plays to make here. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's not like Spawn's lineup is completely, you know, airtight, there's no gaps to put your fingers into, because they are running a fairly greedy support duo with three cores that feel a little bit on the damage lacking side. So you have time to kill people and dual push lineups tend to not group together as much as ones that um, that have only one pusher. So there, there's space for pickoffs here. Um, I like that. But ultimately like though, that. you're going to have to kill it in the mid game. You're going to get opportunities in the mid game and then the drow has to push through because once the morphling gets too big, I don't actually think you get on top of this matchup anymore in like the late to ultra late. I, I don't think that exists anymore. Mm, Aghanim Scepter on the Grimstroke. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. You're right. I was talking about it myself and I completely forgot. Uh, maybe? That could be big. Maybe. That could be big. We'll see. We'll see. Though, uh, Myth Ooh. Avenue, they're coming up here and they have already been spotted. Jacroy is baiting them in. Uh, okay, now you know that there's going to be something going here. A nice dodge on the arrow there with the snowball. This is exactly what we wanted. We wanted you to think <laughs> that we weren't ready. And the low, he accepts this, that he has been outplayed. Spawn have been outplayed by Myth Avenue. Good, good way to start off the game. And Zeal was one of the more enjoyable players to follow in the previous game, and the fact that he's on a like a real going in kind of playmaker again does make me happy to see. Like, this guy is certainly going to give it its all. Yeah, and uh, so Kishka is going to be on the bottom lane. So there's going to be a Rubik versus the Brute. We are going to be seeing some Sentry Wars here uh, between uh, between Kishka and Travis. But let's uh, let's talk a bit about the top lane here, the Mirana and the Brute. I love the Mirana with the Brute. Silken Bola is actually a very good setup for the arrow. You don't move when that hits you. Hello? The LOL is being beat up quite a lot here, but uh, he'll be fine. Mid lane matchup, it is going to be a DK versus a Primal Beast, two fat guys just uh, brawling there, no one can uh, really kill the other. Interesting though that uh, Mamung Dai doesn't get a point in the Dragon Tail there. That is, uh, that is very weird. Morphling, low, Jacroy is going to be... Uh, it's gonna be fine. That is just the morphling doing morphling things oh. in the end. Oh, okay. I got my uh, kibs back. That's good. Sorry, I was I I muted myself. I was talking all the time. I was casting. I promise. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so oh, let's uh, let's hear your thoughts a little bit about the lanes. Any specific ones that you uh, <laughs> want us to keep the, uh, no, the eyes on? No, I was on? I was backing you up on that mid lane. It's like, yeah, nothing's going to happen here, but interesting that he doesn't take the Dragon Tail because it's so good for securing creeps with. Like, just stun, stun a guy, smack the creeps, and you don't have to worry about getting denied because, let's face it, Primal Beast will outlast hit you if you don't at least waylay him a little bit. But he's, he's taken <laughs> a lot of damage here himself. I kind of feel like if you have the Dragon Tail there, you deal more damage than with the Breathe Fire. Really, the difference in damage yeah, is minimal. 
That's, uh, that's surprising also. And the mana cost is less. I'm just not a, uh, not a fan of the Southeast Asia players going for the Breathe Fire. Every single time I see the, uh, in Eastern Europe, I would have seen the Dragon Tail, and mm -hmm. I definitely agree with it. It feels motivated by greed, right? Greed is good. As the old saying from the old days. But, mm -hmm. um... Top lane, Miracle, he is farming well. That is that is quite nice. So he has always been a good draw player, and it is important with this hero to uh, to understand the animation of it and also have the Arcana, because then the animation is better. Everything is better, of course, when you do have an Arcana. Yeah. But uh, because it's not an easy hero to last hit with. Absolutely not. And those early last hits snowball so much into how early you can get to your farm map, how fast you can start actually clearing camps in that jungle. So it is really important to squeeze that lane as much as you can on a draw ranger. Because your recovery is so slow. Mirana is rotating to the mid lane, so we might see a love story here between a DK and the Mirana. Reminds me of something and there's the stun, the arrow. He missed it. Mm. Uh... Yeah. Well, you know, that's, uh, I think that's how the story goes anyway. <laughs> yeah, not, not good. Anyway, uh, the, uh, that's weird though. Uh, the little just, the, this was impatient for, for some reason. That would have been an easy kill actually if they, uh, if they did connect onto the arrow. Now Mamung Daya might be in some trouble. No, actually Exilern is just going for the rune. He doesn't really care about the DK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these two are mostly going to be ignoring each other anyways, right? And we, we get to that interesting point where the DK is going to stay on the lane, try and take the tower. Exilern has to see if he wants to rotate with his six or if he wants to get some teammates in there and kill the DK instead. Mm. Alternatively, of course, uh, V can take the mid lane while the Primal Beast is absent. I like that Kishka is uh, maxing out the Stroke of Faith. I, I mm -hmm. think against the Brood, against the Morphling in the yes. lane also, it's... it's it's much better for sure. And speaking of the brood, uh, he is being hunted, but he knows the Lola has been following Exilor. No, what? <laughs> I can hear the carnival music playing. Yeah. <laughs> just this, this primal beast walks into your lane, walks out again. <laughs> what okay. The hell? What the hell? That That is just like the weirdest rotation that I've ever seen. You know you have been spotted and you're still running top there. Like, yeah, he, he might not care about dying. It, it seems to be a, a possibility. Uh, Was that a rotation or a stroll? Yeah. Had a, had a walk there with the Marana this time around. Arrow. Now I gotta be connecting on to the creeps. Yeah, Exilent is... At least he's doing now a good job staying inside of the creep wave. And uh, mm -hmm. because of that, it's going well. But overall, spawn. Uh, when you look at it, they are they're crushing the uh, the lanes. The lanes are going heavily in their favor. Every single one. Yep. And this draw ranger has been. I don't even want to say left to our own devices, but even with the Rubik here, they barely get rid out. He's not even mm -hmm. dying to the tower shots, man. Ah, didn't have the multi-shot, it was off cooldown. If he had that one, that was a kill, but uh, it, is, uh, it is what it is. But they still do pressure in quite a lot to raid bands. That's a lot of armor to go through Broodmother. We all know this hero also has a solid mm. amount of uh, built-in armor. So, will be uh, fine. Meanwhile, Exilern in a lot of trouble. He doesn't have the Onslaught, he has a Trample, and Travis will have to use the spell there to, uh, to get the kill. He really wanted the TK to secure it, but not gonna be happening. Yeah, and that is really the worst of all worlds for Xealer in there. I was like, okay, is he going to rotate out? Is he going to call his supports in to, to come help him out instead? But V is too busy on top. And Kishka came in too late from the bottom side of the map, and now you're just losing your tower to your DK without getting anything in trade. Ah, you're even giving a bonus kill. That is the strength of the Mirana Tiny. Like, Avalanche into a toss is such a good arrow setup. He didn't even need the Avalanche, so Travens even, uh, even keeps the... Uh, the excess of his mana. This mid lane tower took so much. It's, it's actually gonna go yeah. down. It's, there's really nothing to do at this point. I guess Zeal's okay, coming in. He's not even level 6 yet. Oh, 
Okay, they don't want to let this fall. They want to kill the Dragonite. And now he's not a Dragonite any longer. The Avalanche is going to be great there to stop them. They don't have the Polarize. He's level 5 on Exilarant. But the level 1 Inkswell will be enough. Exilarant does get the kill in the end. Okay, okay. You defended the mid lane tower. Let's go mid Avenue Gaming. But uh, things are going to become dangerous because spawn are going to have level 6 on the Brood. So now when exactly. you do things like these, your Drought dies or your Tower dies either way. Yep, exactly. You pulled that Rubik away to, you know, get the kill in the mid and I think that's worth it because the Drow is going to get kicked out of top anyway. But she's, you know, she could have left before and now instead she's going to go the hard way. Ah, I guess, I guess that counts as leaving. Uh, probably. Now the Mirana is at the um, back to the mid lane, so if you get stunned up again on Exilar and you are gonna be going down. He needs to get out to one second before the Dragon Tail Arrow! We are gonna be seeing some Rubik hair there on the ground in the hair of the Primal Beast because that was so close that it probably clipped both of them. Yep. That's, uh, I'm surprised the tip of his tail is still on. That's a big model. <laughs> Yeah, it is a huge model. And then and then when you click on it, you see that you connect the uh, the arrow only on a small portion of it. That's just kind mm -hmm. of uh, not fair. His tail is too strong. He just strikes it off. Exilarin is on the top lane to try to defend this tower, but he may have put himself in a bad position. They're coming over. Don't have the Silken Bola any longer, but they have the damage. And with DK coming in, they're going to have the stun too. And it's going to be more than enough to bring him down. This is just looking like a disaster from... Uh, from Myth Avenue, they are gonna be in a world of hurt at this game. Yep, and I, I think originally the idea was to get Kishka with those levels in Stroke of Fate up to the top lane and at least delay. But the tower is so low now that he doesn't get to make that play anymore at all. So he's gonna do that for the tier 2, but that means that your jungle is now in jeopardy. Mamagdaya and especially with Dalol, Dalol will just keep on walking up in there, seeing if he can get vision. And either the Brood or the DK will come and mop up anyone who dares show their face in there. Oh, well, let's see the Stroke of Faith in action. Come on. Come on. Oh, this is so tasty. Okay, something else is happening on the map. Jacroy is fighting. No one cares. Let's see. Let's see. Kishka. Arrow. Yep, no. it's gonna be the other way around. Eat my babies, eat. And Kishka is gonna be gobbled on. Actually lives. The two spiders, One very hit. low. Huh? No, not gonna be able to get it. And it's gonna be the lull that possibly loses his life. Level 3 Fade Bolt. Good job, V. Good Rubik mm -hmm. plays there. Getting the kill for yes. his uh, for himself. Not really g giving it to Miracle, who... Uh, I mean, he's the uh, top of the network chart when it comes to Heroes of Dire. Why would he need anything more? So... Yeah. He's uh, he's in a good enough shape. They're defending his lane, making space for him. Yep. I think it's, uh... <laughs> he needs to join. He needs to join. Really, Miracle needs to join every single engagement. They they're already super far behind on Myth Avenue. Yes. Uh, I I'm afraid that both of us will get stuck in sarcasm mode. <laughs> no 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 I'm not never I never do that. Still, uh, three three to three and the three K gold lead on the side of. Uh, on the side of spawn. So let's let's talk serious for a second here. Uh, Myth Avenue, which hero of theirs is the one that uh, should be making space, and what kind of an item level, whatever do they uh, do they really need to make that happen? I mean, it's Styler, isn't it? And he has been late to every single party so far. <laughs> he has been the target of the party several times. Like he's working on the BKB, and normally as a mid laner you can get there pretty fast, but he's already lost his tower. This is going to be slow going, and then what you have left is Zeal, and Zeal is a Tusk who is dutifully building the mech instead of any kind of engagement tools either. How, how are you going to break this tower without getting a pick off first? Okay, you wait, don't have wait. any siege. Wait, I, I, have, I, have a, I agree with all of the things that you just said, but I just paused. Look sure. at this ward in the mid lane from spawn. Like, <laughs> What does it see? Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> You're not happy. Okay, uh, Exiler, he's taking down the trees so that it actually sees something now. Okay, now, now it's much better. Okay, thank you, Exiler. <laughs> that, that was a yeah. really weird one. Like, were they hunting someone in the trees so they place? They usually use a sentry for that. that, that, that that's just yeah. weird. I mean, I... I no. Actually, hey, wait, 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 wait. I followed that Ex one. Okay, well then you can explain to me exactly what happened and what kind of DM I'm going to send this man. 
Uh, <laughs> nothing, you know, it's just uh, he was close to the left side. I think his positioning was a little bit off. Close to the left side there, close to the trees. And they just used all their spells in a second and he died. That's, mm -hmm. that's it. Like, yeah, it was just okay. zap kill. So I, I guess the text is going to be... Don't go full at you. Know. I think it was a positioning problem overall. Usually you're a little bit yeah. to the uh, to the right. Travens gonna be caught there. The uh, attempt onto the Grimstroke is not gonna be successful. Tiny, he might die to his own spell. Dodges that one, but with the Tumblr Stoy, he's not gonna be able to get to the uh, to the edge there. Moonlight Shadow, I heard it being used, and it is gonna be helping Spawn get out. Miracle, though, he's gonna be continuing farming. So despite a good start from Spawn, they haven't been able to capitalize on it. They haven't been able to get like a couple of kills and break up the map. No, and it feels like their ability to get kills in the safe line jungle for the Dire has actually been sort of hamstrung, and now they're on the spider. Yep, and they get the kill. So, you mentioned it, it doesn't matter how far behind we are, can we make plays? And yes, they can. They have the heroes that can engage, and now he's gonna be spawn. It wants to make something happen with the blink dagger on the DK, but he's losing the form. And uh, Xilern would be a great target. Delayed the blink that the BKB even further. Did they see him? Yes, they did, but they won't be able to get on top of him. Mm. And it feels like Spawn might actually have to prioritize getting this tiny blink dagger at some point because relying on just a DK to get these engagements is not good enough. But the tiny, and this is just the problem with running tiny Mirana. Who gets the farm? Well, it's the Mirana because she, she can clear waves much better. She's got more map mobility, she's got that arrow. And the tiny just gets left behind, and now they're gonna get big smoke curved around upon. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, the lol is, is, is everything. washing so well. He's posturing so well to save Mamang Daya, but Mamang Daya blinks into the tree. Zeal should be able to find him here, and he finds him perfectly. He is trapped. He is gone. There is no one that is coming to help you, and now let's just trample the DK into the ground. You are not gonna be healing through this. Extra regen will not help you. Exilion gets a double kill, and that gets in close to the BKB. Myth Avenue playing fast enough spawn. They're farming items, and they're getting picked off over and over again. Yep, uh, usually the trick is to use that extra vision from the Broodmother, right? And the fact that you've got these two towers down in order to in out in on the enemy jungle, keep them busy, uh, squeeze kills out of them, or maybe alternatively smoke across maps, see if you can find Miracle in the triangle, because you know he's going to be there. But they've just been throwing a lot of heroes passively at the top lane, it feels like, making them ripe for Mist to engage into. Well, Kishka will get the ulti off. He doesn't have the silence. He, he really doesn't have anything. This time around, Kishka will be going down. He has been a big nuisance on the top lane. With all of the moves that Nith Avenue have been doing, it's still the three cores of spawn topping the network chart. Now, Miracle is going to get himself a little bit between that one. Considering he gets the shard, he's going to be farming even faster. But still, Nith Avenue, mm -hmm. they need to continue going forward. Yep. And Spawn is going to get closer to the point where they're actually going to get that Morphling involved. He has, uh, he started Lincoln Sphere, like that is the move of a man who knows he's not going to have to do anything in the next 20 minutes. And I guess he's right, but if I was his teammate, I would be like rolling my eyes at it a little bit. So is it Lincoln's Manta Axe? Is that going to be the build? I feel like that's the, uh, that's the yep. way to go. Sounds like it to me. You're pretty well protected against, uh, Shenanigans from the Grimstroke, from the Tusk, and then you start moving into, well, you get a bunch of stats, you steal the Drows, you're all, all good. Kishka looking very this much dead like there. Burning down, but they do bring down the Mirana, so it's a one for one. You're not too mad about it if you are, uh, if you're Myth Avenue. You might be mad that Jacroy just finished off the Tusk, turning into him, using his spells against him, and then finishing him off. So, very nicely done by Jacroy. Mm hmm. Yeah, and that's a reminder of the ticking time bomb that's sitting on a bot lane, right? Uh, it definitely is. Definitely is, and with this kind of a start, it's uh, it's hard to punish him. Oh, Xilern, he doesn't have his BKB just yet. He's gonna be tossed back. Where oh, do yikes. you think you are going? He's surrounded by a lot stolen of heroes, arrow? but he's not taking that much damage. That's a stolen arrow that hits on the Brute, gets them the kill. Miracle comes over with a shard. He's very strong. Mirana needs to be very careful. Plants down the seeds. He's gonna have to leave those fields there, though, because Miracle seems a little bit too strong. They're gonna jump on him. The arrow will be coming through. Miracle, what are you doing? You thought you were safe. You are not safe. At all. The ink swell though will be healing him up. He is safe. He knew that everybody had his back. 
the shard inks, well, gonna be quite nice. That is quite nice. I mean, between the dispel and the heal, and especially because the entirety of spawn as well as a bunch of creeps are just sitting on top of him. Yeah, that's that's a lot of heals, but that that was too close for comfort, man. Like, I he I knew. don't want to claim that that was calculated. Yeah, but... ah, he knew it was sure. calculated. He you know, come on, you, you know this guy. You should be uh, mm, you should be mm, saying mm, like he he knows he knows exactly like if he's no no work. I've I've seen his math. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> like I should have killed him there, like for sure. Like why didn't he die? And the hero like has seventy percent HP. Maybe that's uh, that's something along those lines. Either either way though, the drought does that was survive. Very nice. yeah, very nice, very nice. Works out really well for uh, for Myth Avenue. Uh, six to ten. Spawn are still ahead. Morphling is still a ticking time bomb, but uh, the shard from the Grimstroke is not to be underestimated. Well, then we kill you first. Stolen arrow, gonna be connecting onto the tiny. Almost dies, and the avalanche move. He outplays everyone. He's on a mega kill streak, and really, all of it is deserved. Now he's gonna be finding this ward that finally was placed in a solid <laughs> spot that is gonna be giving some vision. Yes, and that's just straight up kills building him a blink dagger. Oh no. Axilern. Axilern, nine second BKB down the drain, but here comes the Rubik. He's gonna continue going forward. Where are my friends? Where are they? The uh, Tusk is finally there coming over from among Daya, though. It doesn't do uh, uh, too well against magical damage, against physical. It was looking like he's gonna live. Now, finally, they're gonna catch the Rubik. The arrow does connect. Can they bring him down? This guy has been destroying them, and he continues to do so, but finally will be going down there. The, uh, the Morphling again turns into a Tusk, and now he's ready for a snowball fight. Who did it better? It seems like Zeal did it better. Gonna be a beautiful one, but in the end, it will be ending up with Spawn winning the fight, and now it's clean up time. Keshka, he just came back to the world of the living. Jacroy, he just needed to show his face, and he's gonna... <laughs> Overwhelm Myth Avenue. Yeah, and he didn't even start off that well. Like his first snowball basically just rolled into <laughs> the ice shards, but the all's well that ends well. That was the unfortunate BKB reveal for Xylern, I think. And that fight turns out into a rush for spawn now. I guess they're going to try to contest. All of Xylern's cooldowns are back up apart from the BKB, but the lane is already pushing back into them. And they have vision. They knew. They know that their enemies are in there. So they saw them walk in, and uh... no. Okay. Help. Didn't have the time. And Morphling prioritizing the Scotty now. So okay. Not afraid of the draw just yet. I mean, to be fair, if you look at this draw ranger, how many how many stats does she have to steal at the moment? Uh, well, you steal everything, right? I mean, you still 70 attack speed. She has uh, what's her attack speed? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't say. It say. I mean, it's 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 decent, but I understand why. Versus especially these melee engagers with relatively limited damage, like this Scotty just feels too hot to uh, to ignore. It does say uh, the attack speed, though you need to learn how to read. And it's the is this the first thing that is there, so you would be taking uh, some away from our zeal. Yeah, they're gonna be taking his. No, they're not gonna be taking his life away. Guardian Greaves keeping alive among die in a very uncomfortable position. There is gonna be the ulti there from the Grimstroke. Not a lot of spells that they can use, but they're keeping them in place Ooh. for the Drow to go through them. Don't you crow has come over. We have a carry of our own. As the Lincoln Sir now again turns He's into the Tusk, into the Snowball, melts into water, and this water, it's overwhelming. It's big. It's gonna drown all of you, Exilion. He tries to go for the ulti. Not gonna be happening. Miracle gonna be taking a lot of damage and finally dies. To the stolen ice shards, the Croy goes to the side, and the snowball save there for Zeal goes to the other side. There tries to kill the little. Not gonna be happening. We are seeing a lot of heroes left and right. Zeal is gonna have another Guardian Greaves to use, but does that save your life? The answer is no. They do bring down the Morphling, but it's only the one still having the Aegis, still surviving Rubik. I don't know if you want to be messing with this one. He has the Solon Arrow, but he didn't see this one flying towards his face, and now he's gonna have to be dealing with the spiders. But they are just not strong enough to bring him down my god this morphling the only thing he has to do is show up and you can see miss avenue game scattering like a, like somebody just ran through a flock of pigeons and it's really just is like that he could kick any one of them <sighs> it's so die. easy it's so easy for Jacroy. He's so strong, and he's going for that scotty uh, it, it's still a item that counters the drow you know it's mm -hmm. uh it's still gonna be insane, and Morphling, you know, the stats-heavy hero, 
already you don't have anything to deal with him. The only death that we saw was the one that some of us didn't see. But uh, <laughs> it is the... Uh, it is still... Now he looks unkillable. Yep. And Red is going to be bringing in the Greaves for the next fight, which will bring some much-needed aura armor for against the Draw Ranger. It's also going to feel really good. Um, I mean, after that, he's just going to go into the AC, right? And then what? Where is the damage for Myth going to be? It's... Do you prioritize Kishka's? No, because he's not even going into the Aghanim Scepter yet. It's just all going to be a blink frame right now. Uh, wants to be able to make some... Pl I, I don't know why why he himself would get a blink. Like, that doesn't seem too valuable this game. It's not like you're winning. You're going to be jumping in with the Grimstroke. You're going to get a good soul bind. Maybe good soul bind with a double lift, double fade bolt. Is that mm -hmm. how you... Is that how you kill them? Double kick. I mean, I, I guess it's itemizing for being able to still empower your team right now instead of completely cutting off and letting them flounder while you hopefully try to get the one game saving item like I, you're enabling you're going to get good positioning out of it like it's not for you True. to go in necessarily it's for you to not be caught and be able to follow up nicely these spiders spiders they are, are everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. are you a fan of spiders <laughs> me very yeah. useful for the ecosystem and I'm, I'm cool with them until they're like you know Oh, bigger than my fingernail. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Right. I, I am the designator, you know, when you have a group of girls and I'm in there, and I'm the one putting the spider outside, you know, until okay, they so... get like proper big. Then they Yo, can okay. go. Uh, <laughs> then you get a shovel. Yeah, yeah, the big fan of like a, a big bowl and a piece of paper. Oh, look at Jacroy. He's coming in, and it seems like they've read him clearly, but yeah, you, you knew that he uh, might be there, that he might be baiting, and still it doesn't change anything. Look at how fast he turns into Rubik, lifts him up, and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. He's having such a grand old time for himself. Yeah. He's enjoy He's level 20. He yeah, is level the... 20. Exactly, away from attacks. I was looking at the levels before. He's just five levels ahead of the highest level on his own team, or on the enemy team for that matter. That's absolutely balling. Azeal has been caught, and Zeal will be going down. Lifted up into the air, thrown back, thrown into the air again. Goes for the snowball. Will be surviving a little bit longer. But, uh, yeah, that's that's very optimistic coming out from Zeal. Immediate smoke come out. They, it was under vision, but they just want to get there fast. Yep. And uh, now they're going to be moving under MLS and Smoke into a Broodmother who is just about finishing up the Greaves. Aura Armor versus the Drow. It's just, it's moving so smoothly over on spawn now. Like, as soon as the Morphling started joining, everything that looked like a hiccup was, oh no, never mind, that was just buying time. We're good now. I feel like every single game we watched today seemed smooth. Oh, okay, that's a Grimstroke being hit. That's a Murana with an Aghanim Scepter. The lull is very greedy. Jump in from the tiny for the kill. He's gonna pay with his life for his insolence. You mm. thought you could jump into the enemy's base. Well, you thought wrong. He finally has a blink. <laughs> Please let him do something. Yeah. But look at this, from every single side, spawner coming, Jukoi says, Yo, top lane, there's farm, so that's where I'm gonna be. He's going for a satanic, this morphling is looking scarier and scarier by the minute. He's gonna have two ways to uh, remove the silences, to, uh, mm -hmm. so it's, it's gonna be quite nice. Silence from the drow removed. I guess you cannot remove the phantom's embrace with the, uh, with the satanic. So you remove the drow silence with the satanic, and then you remove the uh, phantom's embrace with the manta. Yep, and I mean, that is if the Phantom's Embrace doesn't already get cancelled by the Lincolns. Oh, and there's a DD rune. Or if you kill it in a second because your attack speed is just uh, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. but, you know, it's, uh, uh, who wants the DD? It's gonna be the Morphling. They don't have a bottle, but he is ready to battle for sure. Or is this gonna be a farming DD? Nah. Come on. You, you want to bash some skulls with this, right? True. Right? True, true, you've got, true. You've got those greaves, you were moving forward on the greaves. Just because you didn't catch anybody doesn't mean it's, you know, you don't still have that same timing. So they're they're waiting again. Drow has Staring at each other across the lane. Uh, they are. Well, they don't really see each other. There's some nice wards in the mid lane for Myth Avenue. So this probably is the area for them to fight. 
The thing is, I just don't see them winning a fight. If the Morphling is in front, bursting him down very hard. Scary. No, exactly. I think as Myth Avenue, you're hoping for a moment where this Morphling TPs back to grab a lane or something, and you can burst somebody on the four heroes that remain in front. But, you know, I'm saying that, like, there's good targets among them. The, the Morana is going to have leaps, and the other three are just really very tanky. Exilderon does have a Aghanim, so the Primal Beast now does solid amounts of damage. I've, I've used it in a lobby. Uh, if you are on top of someone and pulverize them with the Ags, you deal a mm -hmm. around 1100 damage just between those two. So that's, uh, that's mm -hmm. actually quite high. Well, we'll see if he'll be able to utilize it, but Spawn are going in. Oh no, Kishka! Yeah. Well, uh, he then decided to go for his blink, didn't even have the gold. He wants that Aghanim Scepter now because he sees my team. They're, uh, they're not really useful. I'm not going to be uh, using the uh, the other form of that. A mar miracle now. TP out? TP, BKB yes. TP out. That's good. That's BKB good. TP. Okay. B is fine too. Another bullet dodged. But the problem is that first this spawn team, the bullets just keep coming. Yeah, they're flying in literally, and you know, at some point you're gonna get uh, shot, and then you're gonna be uh, brought down. The gold lead is also increasing more and more, and spawn. They're they're in such a position when they're easily gonna be able to take Roche. I don't know if Myth Avenue have any chances of contesting that one. Absolutely not, as far as I'm concerned. Look at that, Mamangdaya. Morph's not even here. You know, they don't know that the morph's not here. <laughs> what you gonna do? Stop me? Yeah. What if he is? You still have to be thinking about that one more. Finds mm -hmm. a paladin sword just as the satanic is being delivered. So he didn't have any lifesteal. Now he has the uh, most that you can have. Maybe just having a Marcy on your side would uh, would increase it. Some, uh, uh, some mm -hmm. uh, you know, rate packs or something along those Plats, lines. But yeah. overall, yeah, but overall it's the... Uh, is the most you can have it for yourself and he's gonna be staying with that one his damage is overwhelming mm -hmm. um myth avenue going in snowball save there he tosses him onto each other there is gonna be an ulti and a double fade bolt but uh in the end kishka will be going down rubik didn't want to go for the double lift just to assert some dominance but uh spawn Chasing in, Zeal will get the blink out. No one cares, actually. Spawn don't really care about chasing. They know the Roche is going to be spawning, and they're looking towards that one. The big string of spiders. Red's just making things hard for himself at this point. And yeah, you're completely right. They don't feel any hurry whatsoever. They know they've got this game in the palm of their hands. And they're not going to overextend or anything. They just, every time Myth tries to get out of their base, tries to get something done, they just sort of gently push them back like no not 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 today sorry we have things to do here keep control over this rush this time the rush responds they take it that satanic is up oh she has shard for the morphling sure why not and they dead carry on the other side Shards for a Morphling, dead miracle for 60 seconds, just as the Roche gets taken down. He finishes off the Crystallis, so he doesn't have a buyback, uh, giving Spawn a perfect timing to uh, start hitting the uh, the high ground. Jacroy finds Zeal, gets the uh, stun on him. Oh, that Manta actually gets him over that one. He does have a shard, so those uh, shards are going to be quite big. Zeal gets the blink away. The thing is, can he get himself out? Does have the Ogre Seal Totem, so he'll get himself in a safe position for now. Another shard is going to be flying out from the Morphling, but he's looking towards the Rubik. Hey, Four, no staff. Chill. Four Staff is not going to be saving you. They lift up the Morphling, get him out, but the Avalanche Tronto 3, this is just a slaughter hour. Zekvern, he is going to have a temper tantrum there, but that's not going to help you to live. It might actually be enough for him to get himself uh, uh, out of that one and the Rubik is the only casualty who immediately buys back so that die from spawn doesn't give them too much no doesn't Mamagdaya hasn't even used his BKB yet the only thing that's down is the cooldowns on the aura items for the broodmother but those are going to be coming up back in short order as well Jump in from Zeal, immediately the stun will get removed, he gets lifted up, he gets to the side, Morphling is still not taking any significant damage and he still has the Aegis, actually uses the way for him out, they've already lost the Prowl Beast, he's gonna have to buy back, beautiful shards, onto the Drow Ranger, Miracle has nowhere to go, the little goes in, let's see who's better with a bow and arrow and it is gonna be a Drow that goes down, but also kills the Mirana, so we don't have a winner here for sure, spawn, as uh... 
still going forward. Now the slaughtering is gonna commence. Snowball again. He's been playing the Tusk here quite nicely. He has so much mobility to continue slaughtering every single one. Nice blink out coming up from the Tusk. So he'll get himself to the high ground there in the fountain. But you have been completely pushed back and your home is no longer your own. No, it's going to be in shambles very soon. And they do a decent job at the defense there. They will manage to punish that Marana. Xylern does what he can to go in, out, in. Got another BKB at the ready here as well. But that's going to have to be for the last fight because they will have no buildings left otherwise. The lol there flexing with uh, with his morphling, like when you call your bigger brother, like catch us if you can, mm -hmm. like uh, big words for someone who is dead. <laughs> right? But uh, he's, uh, he's gonna be completely fine. He still has the sags farming quite nicely, pushing in the top lane. He has more net worth than the uh, than the Tuscan. He's gonna have more net worth than Exilarin. Now going forward, that is gonna be a nice soul bind. The morphling and the tiny holding hands. Oh, they're so cute. But if you get close to them, this morphling <laughs> is gonna be defending his loved ones by slaughtering. All of you, Miracle gets slowed down by the Skyly. There is no way that they're not diving. This is just send the babies first. No way that you're going to be sending the real heroes to die. And they finish him off. The spiders hatch from inside him. And V shows his face there just for a second before the throne falls. Spawn get an easy victory in game two. Yeah, and I do think that, again, before the last pick comes out of Myth Gaming, they're already in such an awkward position that they can't solve everything anymore with that last pick. Like, you have to, to make your choices. And you could see that there's a, a window in the mid-game where the Drow indeed gets to, to deal some damage. The Morphling is not yet involved. Um, and you, you get to punish Spawn a little bit for all those incursions into your jungle, but ultimately, the pressure that you've had from that Brood means that the Morphling has been uncontested. He comes in eventually, and after that, the carry matchup is not yours. No matter how much armor you ignore, you're just going to die. Uh, we just had... We just had stomps today, Kips, here. I mean... Every single game that we watched from start to finish, I felt like I knew who was gonna win. Like, there's, mm -hmm. there's no chance for the other team. A little bit. I mean, Xerxia, earlier in today, we, we doubted Xerxia a little bit, right? That's... Uh... Once, once in the game when they're already playing and you know crushing if we did yes. doubt Xerxia I doubted Xerxia in the first series against Polaris their drafts were unconventional and I didn't believe that they would win them but they played awesome Dota right yes. but and then it, it looked like that way here as well as uh, it looked like Myth Avenue Gaming cannot win against Spawn that Spawn are just looking better today absolutely agreed it is. Uh, it was a nice day, though. We had uh, mm -hmm. we had three best of twos. We had yep. e even though the games were one sided, they uh, they were fun. And tomorrow, you mm -hmm. know, we are uh, we're gonna have another three games. You and me are uh, here tomorrow as well, right? Yes, we are, and uh, I'm hoping to learn some more. Like that, uh, the the Cottle plays today were phenomenal. I really enjoyed the support LC and the support um, Gyrocopter out from Xerxia. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, I, uh, I want to see and learn more from this SCA Dota, so, uh, so bring it. Yeah, we are going to be bringing it tomorrow. We start at the same time, 10 CET. We start off with Polaris versus Neon. Then we're going to go into Reaper versus Ehome. And then we will end the day with Spawn versus Ehome. Uh, overall, today we did have a change in the schedule. The first game of the day should have been Polaris versus Ehome. It was changed. So that's why we uh, got to see Xerxia twice. Tomorrow we are going to be seeing Ehome twice. And of course, it is going to be a great day of Dota like today was. Like always, guys, have a have a nice day. Thank you for watching us and we'll see you all tomorrow. So bye-bye.